Good morning everyone, I'm on the road again and uh, today is an exciting day. I've been looking forward to this quite a while now. Um, I'm going together with a, a friend of mine. We're going into the mountains and <clears throat> we are going to start the day with a practice of what is called in Japan Takigyo. And Takigyo is um, uh, waterfall meditation or waterfall practice and it basically requires you to stand under a cold waterfall uh, haven't been to the place where I'm going so I'm looking forward to find out what it's like and how impressive that waterfall is gonna be and um, the cold too is uh, something that I've been looking forward to uh, it's not that very cold um, it's only four degrees out now um, probably temperatures rising already so it's not that very cold and I'm a bit disappointed actually with uh, the the winter this year it's uh, it's not what I expected it's not very cold it's it's actually pretty warm and it already feels kind of like spring in Japan so uh, it's a bit disappointing winter but I've been for the past year and a half, I think. Um, I never missed a day of cold showering. So every morning when I wake up, I take a cold shower. And uh, that's how I start my day. So I'm really excited to now take that a little step further, see what um, the waterfall does. And um, well, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy that because I've been really, really looking forward to that. So I hope I can share some nice footage with you. Um, of course, it's a uh, mindful and spiritual practice, so it's um, it's not really something you like take a camera with and, and document and go like, yeah, I'm under the waterfall then. And no, so um, it's it's very subdued and very mindful practice, and that's also the reason why I'm going. But I'll see if I can get some shots or if I can put a camera down somewhere so that I can at least share. A few images of what the far waterfall looks like and well I can share some uh, insights and uh, some comments with you afterward when I've come out of the waterfall and uh, yeah no looking forward to it so uh, just driving a little further picking up my friend and um, then we head into the mountains and dive under the waterfall so I'll update you soon.
Well, this was an amazing experience. The waterfall was amazing. It was great. I've been cold showering for about a year and a half now, and it was again a completely different experience. Um, but so first we got to Ikoma Mountain, which is uh, in the northern areas of Nara, closer to Kyoto. And on that mountain is a temple called Hozanji. And Hozanji was this temple um, that we first visited where the waterfall is also situated at. So what we did first was pay our respects to the uh, Fudomyo, um, the god of uh, fire and string. And uh, then we also visited the temple complex itself. And it was a really interesting temple because you don't often see and a, a mixture of architecture from different styles and in this temple you had aspects of Shinto architecture as well although it was not necessarily a Shinto place. We ran into um, an, a, a carekeeper of the temple and he, he actually started talking he was very enthusiastic to talk about um, a, a whole lot of things and about the different ADs enshrined and, uh, in the temple and also the syncret syncretic aspect of the architecture because he pointed to the different Torii gates which are usually Shinto um, shrine gates in the temple complex and how that related to the architecture of the temple itself and how there was a, a god enshrined and he told me something very interesting which usually when you go to a shrine and you pay your respects, you ring the bell um, the thing you do is you throw in money, you make two bows, clap your hands twice, make your prayer, and then um, bow once more. Now he said this is a method that is used with the Ise Shinto, which comes from the Imperial pa uh, Family of Japan, and since after Meiji, this has become um, widespread and common practice. But Prior to that, there were different um, types of Shinto in Japan, uh, different types of um, addressing the gods and, uh, and different ways of making your prayer. So he said that at the temple where we were at, um, the way to address the god is to um, bow three times, clap twice, and then finish with one bow. And after you've clapped, you keep your hands together and you make your prayer. But the very important thing is, when you're praying, you, most people, they make their prayer and they say, um, well, I would like to get wealthy, help me get wealthy. And then they bow and finish. But that man told us a very interesting thing, which was, if you don't mention who you are and where you're from to the God, then he also doesn't know who to fulfill this prayer to. So the very first thing you have to do is, in your prayer, say, I am such and such from there and there, and I come here for you to hear my prayer. So you have to address yourself and uh, name yourself so that the God can um, know who to deliver the fulfillment of the prayer to. So that was, that was very interesting. And, um, I think we learned some something new there. So, and then after visiting this very interesting temple, we went to the shrine, um, to the the part where the waterfall was next to the temple, and there first we paid our respects again to the Fudo Myo, and we recited the Heart Sutra, the Hanya Shingyo, um, before we got undressed, got into our fundoshi. The fundoshi is the sort of towel that you the wrap around your waist. And that's the only thing you're wearing when you get under the waterfall. We made a prayer to, again, very interesting because there's there were so many syncretic elements there. Um, before you get into the waterfall, you ring a bell, um, which is usually what you do at a Shinto shrine. So we rang the bell um, again made our prayers, and then went under the waterfall. And that itself was, a, was an amazing experience. As I said, I've been showering cold every morning, 
uh, for the past year and a half. I enjoy taking cold showers very much. It enlivens me. I, f I feel much more energized. Uh, it's, it's something that has become part of my morning ritual practice and it's it's become a very important part of my life. So, so well, doing something like this outside in nature, um, it's gonna be great. And so what a cold shower does for me is that the cold itself, um, being under the cold shower long enough, my body starts to adapt. And when a few minutes in, two minutes, three minutes, uh, I get used to the cold and then it starts to feel like a normal shower and I can really just enjoy it. So that is one aspect of the cold showering. It's um, getting your body, um, well, using your body, your body gets used to it. And it's also a type of exercise, so the blood flow gets better. And because of that, then more of um, these physical aspects, these uh, well health benefits, so to call, uh, happen. And those, I think, are very important, especially now if we're in a, in a time where we should really care for our health and uh, make sure that we do the best things for our body. That was definitely there, but the other aspect that I wasn't really expecting was also the intensity, the strength with which the water comes down on you. The, um, so the waterfall itself was a, a small stream. If you looked at it from the side, you think, oh, it's just uh, this, this small pour coming down. But it was actually a very thick beam of water that would just splash down on you and then splash on your head and get all over the place. And uh, it was more intense than I had expected because it really comes down with quite a force on your head, on your shoulders. And in the beginning I had to look a little bit for where to place my body and where to let the water come down on because uh, I wasn't quite used to this, uh, this strength. And so that to begin with, of course, and then also the cold, it coming down from right above your head, right down onto your head. Keep, if you keep the water flow on your head, then, well, I felt a little bit of um, this kind of brain freeze and my, my head going numb. Uh, at the moment, I actually thought I was sort of going to pass out. So I did adjust my head a little bit, it went better. And then after a while, having this stream in my neck, in my shoulders, I started to feel like I did under a cold shower. I, I got used to the, the cold and also to the intensity. And then I also started to get numb, kind of, like, like this was a really good massage. And then, of course, after, I felt like I had gone for a run. It was that intense of a... Um, a physical exercise, which is also something that I had never experienced in a, in a regular cold shower. So really the physical exercise aspect of it was, was pretty big and I think that as all, all has to do with the intensity with which the water comes down on you. So that was really a, a revelation and I'm really glad I did it. I really want to go again and I think I might even start doing a series on visiting different waterfalls throughout Japan, looking for bigger waterfalls, colder waterfalls, uh, doing more of these things. And the, my friend with whom I went, um, he is also very much into it and he's also open to the idea to go together to f discover different places. So I, uh, this was a great first experience and uh, next step in the cold exposure and um, these kind of uh, ascetic spiritual practices. Um, so I really want to do more of that and I'm really happy I did it. I'm really happy I've been able to share it and well, I hope that I'll be able to share more of these things, of course, about Japanese culture as well in general and tea in specific more. Uh, so stay tuned for new updates, new videos on my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to get updated on new videos, subscribe. Also hit the bell and I'll be looking forward to seeing you again in another video.